Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. We are in the final few parables of Jesus that we're studying together. And parables are stories that Jesus told that had a point. They had meaning. And these last few parables that Jesus shared in his last few days on earth had to do with when Jesus comes again someday. And since Jesus hasn't come yet, that means they still apply to you and me. So grab your Bible. We're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25. So yesterday we saw a story that talked about like being ready. Being ready. We don't know when Jesus is coming again, just like we don't know when a thief might come to our house. We are entrusted with responsibilities like the servants. And we want to be God's good representatives, his good servants, sharing his life and his love. And so now we have a story about some girls at a wedding. So let me ask you, have you ever gone to a wedding? And if you haven't been to a wedding, what about like a party? And isn't it exciting? Maybe like 4th of July parade. Does your town do a parade for the 4th of July or any other time? Have you been to a parade? And maybe you know that the grand finale is coming. Maybe it's fireworks. Maybe it's a float. Maybe they're throwing out candy. And you're waiting and waiting and waiting. How well do you wait? Hmm. How well do you wait? We could also say, how is your patience? Are you able to be patient, to wait patiently? Well, let's see how these girls do at this wedding when it comes to waiting. Matthew 25, it says, and just as Jesus talking, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 girls who went to wait for the bridegroom. They took their lamps with them. Five of these girls were foolish and five were wise. The five foolish girls took their lamps, but they didn't bring extra oil for the lamps to burn. The wise girls took their lamps and more oil in jars, and the bridegroom was very late. All the girls became sleepy and went to sleep. At midnight, someone cried out, the bridegroom is coming, come and meet him. And then all the girls woke up and they got their lamps ready. But the foolish girl said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. The wise girl an girls answered, no, the oil we have might not be enough for all of us. Go to the people who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. So the five foolish girls ran off to buy oil. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came. The girls who were ready went in with the bridegroom to the wedding feast. Then the door was closed and locked. Later, the others came back. They called, sir, sir, open the door to let us in. But the bridegroom answered, I tell you the truth. I don't know you. So always be ready. You don't know the day or the time the son of man will come. So a few things we need to talk about here. First off, what's a bridegroom? Because the thing is, is we are used to at a wedding, there's a bride and a groom, right? They're two different people. So in this one, a bridegroom is the word that they were using for the groom. So the groom would go and he would, it was almost like a parade, you know, saying hi to everybody, going, you know, going through town. It was this big celebration. And then when the groom arrived, probably and this is where all the girls are at. They're like bridesmaids, aren't they? They're kind of like the bridesmaids if we were to think about it like today's type of wedding. The groom is parading on his way to the bride's house. The bridesmaids are there. And once they get there, the big wedding feast is going to happen. And so these bridesmaids, these girls, they're waiting and waiting. What is taking the groom so long, so long? And they all fall asleep. If we're thinking about this in terms of Jesus coming again someday, he is the groom. The Bible talks about how the church is his bride. You and me, because the church is people, isn't it? We are all Jesus' bride in the fact that Jesus loves us that much, like a groom loves a bride. And when we think about Jesus coming back, have we been waiting a long time? Yeah, we've been waiting, haven't we? 
Oh, and you want to know something? It's been over 2,000 years and I'm sleepy. There's people who have been sleepy. And here's the thing. All of the girls fell asleep. So it's okay to get discouraged. It's okay to get tired of waiting for Jesus to come again. It's okay to maybe lose your patience and be like, what is taking so long? There's nothing wrong with that. We're all tired of waiting. We wish Jesus would come back. But we don't know when he is, he is coming. What really matters is when the bridegroom, when we hear someone going, the bride, the groom is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Come and meet him. We all wake up. And then it's the lamps. Who is truly ready? Who is truly ready? We want to meet Jesus ready, don't we? And in Jesus' story here, it's the lamps with the oil. Five girls had extra oil. They were ready. They could see in the darkness for the groom to come, right? They had a light. They had light to see the groom coming. And they had plenty of extra oil so their light wouldn't burn out. These other five girls, they didn't bring extra oil. Their lamps started going out. It's getting dark. They can't see. They're excited about Jesus coming too, but they can't see. And they go, hey, give us some oil. And they're like, no, you got to go buy more. We won't have enough for everybody. So they run off. They got to have more oil. They can't see Jesus. They can't see Jesus coming. But they're trying. They're going off to buy oil. They get more oil. They run. But they missed out. Because while they were buying oil, the groom came. And everyone went into the house for the wedding feast. And the door was closed. And it was locked. And these girls come back. And they knock on the door. And they go, hey, open the door. And the groom answered and listened to this. I tell you the truth. I don't know you. That's going to be a theme in these last few stories in this one and the very last one. I don't know you. I might be looking for Jesus. And Jesus wants to be found. But Jesus goes, do you know me? Do you know me? Because I don't really know you. You, you got so tired, you fell asleep, you didn't take it seriously anymore. You gave up hope that I was going to come back. Maybe you figured, nah, eh, someday I'll have my act together when it's really important. Jesus goes, I don't know you. I wanted to know you, but it's too late. Again, we think about Noah's Ark. Noah told the people that it was going to rain, that a flood was going to come. He was telling them for over a hundred years. And they finally were just like, this is ridiculous. I believed you at the beginning, Noah. I took you seriously. I helped you build your boat. But then the rain didn't come and the rain didn't come and time went on and time went on and you kept saying it was coming. And I, I just don't know. Nah. And they gave up on it. They they didn't need any extra oil for their lamps. They said, I don't think it's ever going to rain. I think Noah's a crazy person. He keeps saying this is going to happen. A flood. What a load of hooey. Jesus coming back? Nah, they've been saying that for thousands and thousands of years. Nah. And then it started to rain. And then how did people feel about Noah safe in the ark? And the door to the ark was closed by God's hand, wasn't it? They couldn't be open for more people. And they came pounding, going, let us in, let us in. But it was too late because at that point, they wanted on the ark, not because they believed in the God who was sending the flood. Not because they had a loving relationship with that God. They wanted on the boat because they didn't want to drown in the flood. What is the motive for the relationship? The wise girls had the extra oil. They were ready. They were going to hang on as long as it took because they knew the groom. They knew the bride. 
they've been waiting and waiting. They've had times where they got sleepy, they lost their patience, they went, oh, is the, is the groom, is Jesus ever gonna arrive? But they were ready when it counted the most. They were ready, they had their oil, and they went in to celebrate at the wedding feast. The others, by then, they just wanted in for the party. They wanted in for the party. They wanted, that's where they were supposed to be. That's where everybody else was. But they didn't know the groom. It's all about the relationship. It's all about the relationship. And when we have that relationship with Jesus, want to know something? We're able to wait. We're able able to say, Jesus, you want to know something? Even if you don't come in my lifetime, even if you don't come back for another thousand years, that's okay. Because I've got a relationship with you. We love each other. I know you. You know me. And I have an opportunity to someday be a part of your wedding feast, the banquet in heaven. Let's have a prayer and close up. Dear Jesus, we look forward to when you come again someday. We want to have the relationship with you where we know you. It's all about knowing you. It's all about spending time with you, having your love in our lives and our hearts that can then flow out into the lives of other people. That is our light shining. Our light shining in the darkness is the difference that you've made in our lives. The love, the light, the city, like it talked about in our other parable about how we don't hide a light under a bushel, under a bowl. No, we put it on a stand to shine. We shine for you, and that means we can wait as long as it takes because we know that you are coming again someday. We look forward to that day, but until that happens, may we just spend more time just getting to know you. We thank you so much for your love. In your name, amen. All right, reread this story. Reread this parable. And then, like we said during our prayer time, maybe you want to flip back to Matthew 5. Maybe you want to flip back to Matthew 5 verses 14 to 16 about what it's like to be this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. What do we do with our lamps while we're waiting for Jesus to come again? How can our light shine with how we know Jesus and what he wants us to shine in the lives of others for him? So reread this story. Look at the discussion questions in the video description below. And to see what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to your heart. And I will see you tomorrow.